Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another StarCraft II Legacy of the Void upload! Today it's going to be a game between Zetsui and Kumo here on Acid Plant The Ladder Edition. This is a Silver League level game sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. I'm going to use it for my bi-weekly Into the Void cast. It just means that we're going to examine bronze and silver league level gameplay on Friday nights every other week. If you have a bronze or silver league level replay you want to send to me, shoot it over to falconpaladin at gmail.com. And we'll see if it gets cast. In the bottom right hand corner, the red zerg player Kumo. And in the top left hand corner, the blue Terran player, it is Zetsui. Alright, Zetsui versus Kumo here for you. Gonna be silver level shenanigans for you. Again, these players should have a pretty darn good interesting, or pretty darn good grasp rather. On build orders. It's a barracks for Zetsui. Supply Depot into barracks, into refinery here. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. It's a hatch first from Kumo based on that 300 minerals. And this is where things are okay for the silver level players most of the time. If you got out of bronze, you have a decent understanding of opening build orders. However, to get out of silver, you gotta do that. You gotta keep macroing, keep doing build order stuff while scouting, while attacking, while defending. And that's where these players generally tend to fall apart. So we'll see who's going to come out on top here today. It is our lobby battle. Really like to watch these because weird stuff happens, man. Really weird stuff happens. Saw a, what was a planetary? Oh, uh, yes. One of the games that I remember from a rocket, I believe. Uh, it involved a planetary fortress that a Terran player had set up in a TBT. He planetary fortress his own main. And it just was his Terran opponent running Marines into the Planetary Fortress over and over. Because he wasn't quite sure how the Planetary Fortress worked. Wasn't sure how to kill it. And it resulted in some insanity. To be sure. So it's a Reaper on the way from Zetsui. Don't see many of these in Into the Void. But Zetsui feels confident in his Reaper micro skills. So this is going to be um, Salt Bay. That's all I got. It's Salt Bay. I don't... If that's a reference for the kids these days, I am not hip enough to pick up on it. But regardless, the Reaper's name is going to be um, Salt Bay. Going to head on down. Try to kill some things based on that rally point. And indeed, it is coming down to the south. I got Queen started on time for Kumo. Got Four Ling started on time for Kumo. I mean, honestly, if you watch this, the timings are good enough. This could be a like Masters GM level player based on how crisp these timings are from Kumo. It's just, I imagine... It's going to start to fall apart here fairly soon. So here comes the Reaper. Here are the Lings. Reaper actually running around on creep. Not quite able to micro to the point where you can kill these Lings. Again, staying on creep. Not throwing down a KD-8 charge. The basic concept is there for Zetsui. But staying on creep and not throwing down KD-8 charges and not kiting these slow Lings. Although staying alive. Like, I can't argue with that. And actually evading the Queen, too. So not ideal. But still not bad. Not bad from Zetsui. I imagine we'll see a promotion for him sometime soon, just basically based on that. Command Center being built on the high ground. I imagine he's tried building it on the low ground before and had a bad experience with Zerglings. But you can really do this, especially if you do end up scouting a hatch first from Kumo. You don't have to worry about Ling shutting this thing down, at least not... I guess you do have to worry about four slowlings coming up and killing the SCV, building the command center. But if you have a Reaper, you shut that thing down pretty easily. So, should not be a concern. Kumo does have speed. He's sending his lings out all different directions, trying to check out for proxies, trying to see for ninja bases. And I kind of like it. I kind of like how he's just got the lings spread out, trying to see are there any weird bases being taken. No. Because the Overlord, I think, scouted in here. Well, maybe he hasn't scouted in yet, but he doesn't see any SCV activity. So he knows there's not an expansion there. Maybe there's a ninja, but nope. Definitely not. Command Center, Orbital Command, just floating over nowadays. Barracks, Widowmine production has begun for Zetsui. Widowmines are OP in the lower leagues. If you're a Silver League level player and you're watching this, honestly, Widowmines. Widowmines are the way to go. Because opposing players won't really know how to deal with them that well. Won't know how to respond to them once they recognize that they're out. Etc. It was worse when they were always cloaked. It was definitely worse when a burrowed widow mine stayed burrowed forever. But now, after they fire, they become uncloaked and visible until they're ready to fire again. So at least you can't just park widow mines in your opponent's widow, uh, mineral line and let them wreck everything while your opponent desperately tries to figure out where to get detection. Because honestly, Kumo does not have detection right now. He has a couple evolution chambers on the way, a roach horn, a baneling nest, and a lair, but nothing that will let him detect cloaked or invisible units. 
at this point. Five minute mark is a little bit dangerous there. Honestly, the evolution chambers should have been out a little bit sooner. But again, this is into the void. This is what we're looking at here. It is 34 to 29 harvesters. Kumo has the lead. Uh, tank production has begun for Zetsui. We've got Stim and Combat, or Concussive Shell, rather, on the way from Zetsui. So he's going to want his Marauders to have that slow. And there's a third base on the way from Kumo. All right, so Marine production here. Is that another reactor? Yeah, so it's going to be a Marine tank with some Marauders. Tank positioning here is perfect. This is where you want to put a tank to cover that front door. The range almost covers to this opposing line. If you build, like, a barracks or a factory right here, it forces Zerglings and roaches and stuff to come through this area that's covered by the tank splash overlord scouting in it is a slow overlord for kumo but he's going to scout everything at this point you see the double barracks with the double reactors that's going to be a lot of marines you see the factory you see the tank coming out you see the starport building a reactor here too it's going to be marine tank with medevac support there's nothing else it can be from zetsui this is not going to be a factory play at all from the terran player so that's why you scattered about five minutes five six minutes will give you the information that you need and if the anti-air and the response from Zetsui isn't fast enough you can scout a lot more things than you should be able to as the overlord dies ah, and supply blocks Kumo oh man you can't do that you can't get supply blocks okay pro tip make a couple overlords before sending in your sacrificial overlord before you sack that one in make a couple make three just to compensate for the one that dies in the meantime fine whoa or nine I guess Kumo's gonna overcompensate with nine overlords but floating about 2,000 minerals here. See, this is where things start to fall apart. You're about 46 workers. Your injects aren't looking all that great for the Zerg player. Starting to float some energy here. Not using that larva as efficiently as you should be able to. And your army's not going to be as big as it otherwise would be. I mean, right now, it's literally 26 Zerglings from Kumo. Which you can do because Zetsui is not attacking. That's a fourth base on the way from Kumo. I'm a huge fan. If you can't spend your money, expand. Make a macro hatch inject like for all that is holy inject infestation pit from kumo yeah kumo knows what he's doing kumo is aware he's got lings scouting all over he has every base covered he knows exactly where zetsui is and where zetsui is not this is where zetsui should be flying around and killing these suckers sending a couple of reapers around maybe picking them off just because this information for kumo is too much it's ridiculous. He should not have this much information about all of these different bases. But he does. And there's not much that Zetsui's going to do about it here. So another lesson to be learned is if you're a Terran player, you really cannot let a Zerg player sit back and do this. You can't let them get four bases before 10 minutes. You can't let them get 60, 70, 80 workers before 10 minutes. Or else you're going to die. The mid game is going to be hell for you. There's going to be creep everywhere. Although creep spreads burn 0%. For Kumo, does not like creep spread. But normally, creep spread would be everywhere. Lings, Banelings, Ultras, Hydras, Lurkers, whatever. Moving out onto the map, if you leave the Zerg player alone for 10 minutes, is a guaranteed recipe for disaster. However, this is into the void. And so, don't know. I feel like Zetsui still has a chance. Normally, this would not be a good recipe for anything. Kumo finally making some Hydras and 14 drones at a time. Getting a Lurker Den. So there we go. It's going to be Lurkers. It's going to be Lings. It's going to be all sorts of traps for your Terran army as it moves out. And it's not going to be a good time. Plus one, plus one is done for the Marauders. What you really need to be doing here is that Sui is being aggressive with these Metavacs. Lift them up. Flying them into different places. Landing them in mineral lines. Killing drones. Killing bases. Killing reinforcements as they trickle in. Honestly, at this point, if you just dropped... Five medevacs full of marines and marauders on A base. I think he would just win right now. There are five hiders and ten lings on the map. That's it. Where do the other lings go? Are they banelings? Are they gonna be banelings? Yes, they are. Okay, I was like, I didn't notice that many zerglings dying. 36 more on the way. Okay, so now your window's closed. But the first nine minutes there, if you dropped on this zerg player, I think you just win the game. Especially if you drop in the main and kill all this tech in this lair. But... As it stands, you're being really cautious. You're trying to expend that... Okay, I was going to say, if that Ling killed that SCV, I'd be upset. I'd be upset for the Terran players at Sui. Alright, so fourth base done. That's a queen. That was a queen coming in. That is additional gas being taken. Are these burrowed banelings or just lings? Burrowed ling? Not as... Did you just burrow everything? It's like, lurkers are good at burrowing. Let's do that. Where'd all his banelings go? He did. He selected his whole army and burrowed it. <laughs> oh 
look, these slings are burrowed now. I kind of like it. I do. They still have pretty good scouting vision, even if they're burrowed, which is hilarious. Uh, enough to tell if there's a base there, but harder for Zetsui to kill. Amazing. Uh, the Banelings were burrowed in there. So it's Ling Bling Hydra with some Lurker support. And by Lurkers, I mean there are none right now. But there definitely could be because that Lurker Den is done. Look at how fancy the Lurker Den is finished in all of its glory. No longer a weird half-finished spinal column like it was for a while. Yeah, that's enough Lings for your Hellions. Especially if there's no Micro on the Hellions. Especially if the Lings have plus two, plus two. Dang, upgrades. Kumo looking good. The plus two, plus two on the Lings and the Bane Lings. The Hydras could probably stand for some attack upgrades too, but whatever. I mean, Lurker damage is enough as it is here. Is that Sui? There's a lot of Burrow coming your way, friend. Burrow Roach, Burrow Baneling, Burrow Ling. Expanding twice, though, is that Sui at the 10 minute mark. He's making up for lost time. He should have had a third by now, but that's okay. I think it's just fine. Double expanding past that is all right. Plus one missile attack. On the way, grouped spines coming in for Kumo. And honestly, I feel like it's time to go. If you haven't watched Fatty TV, Twitch streamer that I am friends with, you should probably check him out. It's twitch.tv slash fatty TV. And um, he does this thing where he looks at his Protoss army because he means Protoss and says, is this a big, scary Protoss army? If it is, he attacks. And if it's not, he doesn't. It's pretty simple. You don't have to count units. You don't have to see what it is. This is a big, scary Zerg army. It's time to go. You can defend very well with this, yeah. But you need to get out there. You need to get in the middle of the base, try to engage with this army that you know where it is because this Zergling has vision of where this army is. If there's enough, if there's these units here, there are more. And now they're walking right over you. Look, look at how perfectly he's set up right over the Zergling. Here's all my stuff, he says. This is literally my entire army in the vision of your tiny little Zergling. I can't believe how well that lined up. Is there anything the Zergling doesn't see here? Maybe some outer lying units. Yeah, like a couple Hellions. Metamorphosis complete. Well, that's a scary sound. Is that more lurkers being born? Kind of feel like it was more lurkers being born. All right, so sensor tower up. Sensor tower does not reveal burrowed units, so it doesn't help him see these Zerglings who aren't actually blocking anything. They're just little information gatherers, which I really like. All right, so Zergling, no Zerglings, no, no. No Zerglings. Bad Zerglings. Do not attack into this. Okay, maybe with some Baneling support. Alright, we got some kiting. Trying to kite the Banelings. Pretty good explosion, nevertheless. That's a lot of Zerg blood and Terran blood on the ground there. Zetsui knew enough to not just stand there and take the Baneling hits to the face. He kited. He tried his best to get out of there. Didn't work super well. He ended up losing uh, 42 Marines. Wow. Uh, yes, Kumo, I feel like, is well in hand. He has this game well in hand. He's got the four bases. He's got 174 supply, sitting on 7,000, 1,000 resources. Getting tunneling claws. I kind of feel like just another Ling Banling attack would end this thing. Kumo, I really do. Whoa, all right, 42 Banelings. I guess 42 Banelings make you feel like you can win this thing. Holy crap. Level of detail, whoops. Level of detail in these games is honestly, it just blows my mind sometimes. Running on the super highest ultra settings is good for that. Okay, we're gonna do this. Remember what I said about another Ling Banding attack would probably be enough to finish this army off? I was not lying. I still think that's the case, especially with a minimal micro and still sitting here very nicely on top of this Ling so he knows where this army is. It's incredible. All right, Zergling's leading the charge, getting massacred. Sorry, Zergling, you do not do all that much. Target fire, really good. Not bad. Not bad. They kind of just stood in there and took it. Uh, 67 Marines have died. 46 Banelings have been killed, though. That's killed, not exploded on their own volition. So 5,000 resources lost for Zetsui, about 6,000 for Kumo. Pretty even to this point. I cannot believe how passive Zetsui has been, though. This is why. Zetsui has great concepts. He's getting upgrades. He's spending his money okay-ish. Alright, he's not. He's not sitting at 4,000, 2,000, but but, he just, he hasn't been aggressive at all. Has he scouted? He hasn't scouted since that Reaper. He doesn't know how many bases the Zerg player's on. 
He doesn't know what tech he has except for Ling Baneling. He doesn't know there are mutas out right now because there are mutas out right now. He doesn't know about this fifth base that Kumo has coming up either. He's just defending, 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 expanding, expanding. And you know what? This might be viable in the lower levels. Zetsui could very well win this game. But if you want to get into Platinum, you want to get into Diamond, as a Terran player and as a TVZ, you absolutely have to be aggressive. You have to be dropping constantly. You have to be doing Hellion run -bys. You got to go for pushes. Just You cannot let the Zerg player sit back and do whatever they want. You will die. There's just no question about it. I know I've said this a few times, but it's still exceptionally true. Mutalisks can do something here. What do you have in mind, Mutalisks? You gonna try to kill some uh, some SCVs, maybe? Oh, there's no anti-air here either. Okay, well that's free SCVs for everyone. That's delicious, nutritious SCV sandwiches. And the Mutas pretty smartly run away. That Marine count was growing. They do have 2-2 and Medivac support with Combat Shield. So the Mutas fly away to engage somewhere else. Free SCVs over here too. Didn't kill any of them. Pretty good response from the Mutas that time around. But these guys are sitting in the sensor tower, which means that Sui knows that they're there, but he's got to be pretty darn... Okay, pretty darn aware. All right, um, more SCVs dying. We're looking at 15 SCVs killed by these Mutas. All of the medevacs coming over here first. Oh, he moved his army. He moved his medevacs and the marines over just separately. And all right, all the mutas are dead now. Whoa. Meanwhile, little mind shot on those roaches. Bailing's getting in on this fourth base, killing a few of these SCVs. Roach is getting clobbered though. That is too many marines, my friends. Your upgrades are good. But the Marines are on plus two, plus two, and they have stim, and they got number you like six to one, so that's not going to work out at all, is it? It's 63 to 33 harvesters. Kumo is way in the lead on worker supply, but we can't count on that. We absolutely cannot count on that being the thing. All right, Zatsui says the 17 minute mark is the time to attack. It is time to come in here. I got some Hellbats. Hellbats need to be in the front. They can absorb bailing shots a little bit better. Um, also, they're not ranged, so they should be in the front. So, fourth base by Kumo dies almost instantaneously to a billion Marines. 72 Marines. Muta's flying back on into Kumo's natural base. Going to try to kill some stuff there while there's nothing defending at all. Okay, here's the trick. Is that Sui decides to attack into these lurkers without scanning, he toast. Even if he decides to attack into these lurkers with scanning, he may be toast. Because lurkers are really good against Marines. They don't do that bonus damage versus Marines because Marines aren't armored, but... Nevertheless, okay, here goes nothing. Lurker spines. Is that Sui going for it? I don't know, man. Bailing's getting some amazing hits, though. Oh, goodbye, Terran army. I don't know how much of you are left. Okay, zero things of you are left because the medevacs were obscuring a little bit of it. But <laughs> that Sui's out. That Sui's done. Wow, he has twenty-five and Marines and three tanks left. But only 32 SCVs, a lot of his workers have been dying at his third base, and his natural base, and his fourth base is fairly happy, I guess, but these lurkers didn't even do anything. Couple kills here, one, five, four, sure. But the medevac count is actually kind of hilarious. 20 medevacs and 25 marines, those marines will never die. They're going to be healed for days. Four days. All right, well, yeah, that's kind of generally how this works in the lower levels, man comes down to one or two major battles. The Zerg players, Lurkers, uh, did come into play there, but enough Banelings were there that the Marine count didn't matter. Didn't micro all that much, if at all, did Zetsui. He pulled back a little bit, but not enough. Not enough, and he paid the ultimate price. 138 Marines died there. Whew. Still, resources lost fairly even. 11,000 for Zetsui. 14,000 for Kumo. Kumo lost more, actually. A lot of that was dead banelings, a lot of that was roaches, 10 mutas went down too, but in the end, didn't matter. You can lose more resources and win if you know what you're doing. And Kumo made it happen. I love, again, the vision by Kumo was just admirable. Super, super great. I think I might try to steal this. All right, so that is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with another edition of Into the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. All at slash Falcon Paladin. 
And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Thank you.